Hello and welcome to today's English lesson. My name is Stuart. In today's lesson, we're looking at idioms that are related to sport. Let's go to the intro. Okay, now, as I said, today's lesson is looking at sports idioms, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight idioms that are related to sport. And the reason they are related to sports is because they either have a, a sport uh, in them or they are associated to a sport. And we'll see with the individual idioms uh, what this exactly means. Now, the objective of this lesson is to help you take your English to the next level by being able to understand and incorporate this type of idiom into your speech and into your writing in order to help you improve your fluency. Now, we'll start off with the first one, and the first one is low blow. Now, low blow comes from boxing, and obviously a blow is a punch, and a low blow is a punch that is below the belt, let's say, a low blow. But in the context that we have here, so we'll have a look at the meaning through context. I know you don't like Jim, but calling him fat was a low blow blow, okay? Calling him fat was a low blow. Now, what they mean here is that you insulted Jim by calling him fat, and it wasn't fair, okay? It wasn't just. It was a low blow. It was something that he wasn't expecting. He wasn't expecting you to call him fat. He didn't take it very well, because it wasn't fair of you to do that. So it was a low blow. It caused him uh, unfair damage. It was something that perhaps you should not have said, all right? So it was a low blow. So it can be a comment. It can also be something that you do in order to uh, hurt somebody or you do something to somebody unfairly, okay? Now, the next one is plain sailing, and it's fairly clear that uh, this idiom comes from sailing. So to be plain sailing, again, let's have a look through context if we can understand what it means. So I wouldn't say my time at university was exactly plain sailing, okay? Plain sailing. Now, what this means is that my time at university wasn't easy. It wasn't smooth. I had some ups and I had some downs. It wasn't smooth sailing, which we can also say, or plain sailing, so it wasn't easy. So if something is plain sailing, it's smooth or it's easy, and my time at university uh, wouldn't, and my time at university uh, wasn't plain sailing, okay? Wasn't plain sailing. It was difficult. It had its uh, ups and downs. Now the next one is keep your eye on the ball or take your eye off the ball. Again, context. Let's have a look. This is a very competitive industry. You must keep your eye on the ball. You must keep your eye on the ball. Now, what this means is that you must remain alert. You must remain attentive in this industry. You can't take your eye off the ball because you know that if the ball is coming towards you and you take your eye off the ball, you miss the ball. So we're using it metaphorically to talk about industry. You can talk about other things as well, your, your profession, your job. So if you take your eye off the ball or if you don't keep your eye on the ball, it means that you lose that uh, competitive edge or that you are not as alert perhaps as you should be. So keep your eye on the ball, take your eye off the ball. You can use those two uh, similarly. Now the next one is ballpark figure or estimate, ballpark figure or estimate. Now ballpark referring to a baseball stadium in this sense, a ballpark figure. This expression comes from the USA, a ballpark figure or estimate. So I don't know the exact price, but the ballpark figure is around $500, okay? The ballpark figure. So the rough 
figure, the uh, not exact figure, okay, the ballpark figure. So we don't want the exact amount or we don't know the exact amount of how much something is going to cost. So if somebody gives you a ballpark estimate or ballpark figure, it's in the it's in the vicinity, it's in the range, okay? It's more or less close to the figure that you are expecting, the ballpark figure. Now, the next one is level playing field, level playing field. Now we can get the idea of a level playing field, an even playing field. We need to simplify the rules so everyone is on a level playing field, an even playing field. So what this means is that no one has an advantage or a disadvantage in a particular situation. You can often see this in government documents that Governments are trying to make it even for people to have access to certain services or perhaps some type of government grants. So we don't want people that have an advantage for some reason or people that have a disadvantage. So we need to make the playing field level, okay, or even, an even or level playing field, okay. The next one is to be stumped. Now, to be stumped is a cricket idiom. Now, I'm not going to explain to you the rules of cricket in this lesson because it's a very complicated game to understand, especially if you haven't grown up with the sport. But to be stumped, stumped is a way that you can get out in cricket. And in this sense, it means that uh, you're baffled or you don't understand why something happened. So the police are completely stumped as to how the robbers escaped. So the robbers committed the robbery, they escaped, the police investigated, but they're completely stumped. They're clueless. They have no idea of how the robbers escaped. Okay, the robbers escaped and nobody knows how. So the police are completely stumped, okay? Without any idea of how it happened, stumped. Number seven is par for the course, par for the course. Par for the course is a golf, a golf uh, idiom. And of course, if you have played golf, you know that uh, a golf course has a par, uh, for example, a par 68 or 70 or 72. And it's the amount of shots that most people go around the golf course in. So you have a par three, a par four, a par, a par five hole. And if you play on par, it means that you get your ball into the hole in that amount of shots. So par for the course, in this sense, let's have a look. Nowadays, traffic jams seem to be par for the course in this city. So they seem to be normal. It's something that we expect. We expect traffic jams. Now it doesn't necessarily mean that they're good, but they're par for the course. It's something that has happened. We have accepted them. We now consider them as normal. A few years ago, traffic wasn't a problem, but today it is, and it's now par for the course. It's probably not going to go away, so we have to accept it as par for the course, okay? So that's how we would use it here. Traffic jams seem to be par for the course. And the last one is to throw someone a curve ball. Now, curve ball is a baseball term again. It's a ball that curves in, and what it means is, is that it's something that's not expected, okay? So, Sam threw her parents a curve ball, by not going to university. Sam's parents were expecting her to go to university. She said, Mum, Dad, I'm not going to go to university. So she threw a curveball to her parents. They weren't expecting it. They had trouble to understand why it was happening. They had trouble to understand why their daughter didn't want to go to university. So she threw them a curveball, an unexpected uh, event, let's say, or an unexpected occurrence. Okay, Sam not going to university was a curveball. You can also say that life Life can throw you a curve ball. If there's an earthquake and your home is destroyed, you can say life has thrown us a curve ball. We weren't expecting that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight idioms related to sports. 
Now, thank you very much for watching the lesson. Remember that if you have a question or a comment, please leave it in the section below. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Remember to share the video on social media. I'll see you in the next lesson. Have a good day. Bye for now.